and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over how you can use MongoDB with Parse, and more specifically, how Parse is able to use MongoDB as a database backend and keep a really nice and simple to use interface for developers and database owners. So let's take a look at how this works. Now, one of my subscribers actually originally sent in this question, so now I'm creating this video. So I'd like to say a big thank you to him who actually sent in the question. All right, so let's begin. Now, what I'm going to do here is, um, in case you didn't already know, now I'm I'm uh, assuming that you are already familiar with the Parse server uh, and you've used it before, uh, but now I'm going to show you how it actually works in the back end. Uh, and what happened is the person who's actually sent in this question, uh, he was actually uh, wondering exactly how Parse is able to use MongoDB as a back end and how that comes into play when we're hosting a custom Parse server. So let's take a look at how that works. It actually all begins begins with the actual Parse server itself. Uh, and there are actually two pieces of software that Parse has made available to the public. Uh, and I don't want you to get confused between these uh, because there are two really distinct types of software. First of all, the Parse dashboard and the Parse server. Now let's take a look at this. First of all, let's just say that we've got a MongoDB backend. Okay, So this is our backend and this is what's actually storing our data. And it's called MongoDB. Okay. It's a NoSQL setup, basically. Uh, it, it's based off of the NoSQL environment. Uh, now, apart from MongoDB, of course, we've got Parse. And under Parse, we've got two categories, as I said. We've got the Parse server. Uh, and so I'm going to say Parse server. Okay. Uh, and apart from that, of course, we've also got our Parse dashboard. So we can just write that here. So we've got our parse dashboard. Okay. Now, let me explain exactly how all of this comes into play. Now, the parse server uh, is basically this uh, interface, okay? And basically what we're doing, what our point, our goal is, is to make MongoDB accessible and easy to use for everybody. Whether that's someone who's going to be taking a look at the database internals uh, and see how everything's going on inside the database, the, the actual data in the database, and they want a simple to use interface like, I mean, just for example, phpMyAdmin uh, to actually see what's in the database and do stuff with it uh, and also for developers who are actually incorporating it into their applications we want a simple to use an easy interface for all of those people and so that's why we have two separate pieces of software the parse server is, is basically going to make it easy for developers to have their own uh, sort of interface for MongoDB through things like uh, iOS, Android, Java, C, Node.js, a variety of different languages, uh, lots of different languages, even Go. Uh, and the Parse dashboard is going to be this uh, web interface where you can take a look at what's inside of your database uh, and actually uh, work accordingly. Now let me explain how this actually works. But let's also just say that we've got your application or the code that's using your MongoDB. Now, Okay, so this is your application here. Now, let's just say we've got application number two as well. This is really going to help me drive across the point. Okay, so we've got application and application two. Now, the first thing I'm going to take a look at here is Parse Server and MongoDB. Now, the point of Parse Server is to be able to have this little communication protocol to and from MongoD. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so basically, we're going to have this little communication protocol between Parse Server and MongoDB. And the way this is going to work is through a regular MongoDB connection, just like how you would implement it in your applications. And so, of course, the MongoDB can communicate back to Parse as well. 
Now, the parse server will provide a REST API, and that REST API can then really easily be used with MongoDB. And this will also, uh, this will also, oh, sorry, with, with MongoDB and the rest of your applications here. And this REST API has a few credentials as well, such as the API key and the master key, oh, sorry, the app key and the master key. Uh, but I won't be getting into how those work just yet. That's a topic for a different video. Uh, but let's just say the parse server has this really neat REST API that you can use to contact MongoDB. However, what happens is, let's say this is an iOS application, this is a Node.js application. What's going to happen is, let's just say, for example, um, you don't want to use the REST API, which uh, sometimes you don't want to. Uh, you want to have a really simple interface. Uh, and the way you can do this is by using the language SDKs that Parse actually pr provides by default for many different languages, including Node.js and Swift for iOS. Uh, and so what can happen is let's just say you've got your iOS application. What happens is instead of using a really difficult connection from iOS to MongoDB, it becomes a lot more simple. If you were to just have one connection, and this is in this case your sorry, language SDK, uh, and this language SDK will then in turn communicate with your parse server, which will communicate with your MongoDB instance, uh, get, retrieve, delete, update data, do anything you'd like to, and of course we'll keep returning the results back to you. It's basically as if the application doesn't care about what this is doing, it just imagines that there's this big database here, but parse server isn't actually your database, it's your communication protocol basically. Okay, so once you've got that done, then let's take a look at Parse Dashboard and then I'll get into application number two. Now, the Parse Dashboard is this really simple to use interface, just like phpMyAdmin, to basically uh, administer your database uh, and to take a look at what's inside of your database, to update rows, to add tables, uh, to add rows, do a lot of different type of stuff. Uh, and so the Parse Dashboard is actually basically this UI that's built on top of the parse server again. It's built in Node.js, and of course, what's happening is it's using that Node.js language SDK for parse, and it's able to communicate with a parse server of your choosing, and it's able to show you your data. But now comes in the interesting part. MongoDB, the second application, now let's just say that you've hired a developer, and that developer doesn't have any experience of using the parse server, but that developer has experience using MongoDB. Now what can happen is your application here, application number two, which is your Node.js application, your developer doesn't know how to use parse with, with Node.js, only knows how to use a MongoDB connection, but then you're like, oh, wait, what do I do now? Well, I can't use parse, but we're using parse, what do we do? Hire a new developer? No. Now, since parse server is basically this, uh, this stack sitting on top of MongoDB, this little uh, this, uh, development UI, basically, I like to call it, uh, and what happens is your second application can actually directly communicate with MongoDB. And what will happen is those changes will actually be shown across whatever parse server is doing. The reason I'm saying this is because, okay, let's say you've got a MongoDB instance, uh, and you register a new user through application number two, that data goes directly through Mongo, to MongoDB. It does not go through the parse server into MongoDB. Because if you, t if you think about it, this is what's actually storing all of our data. It's not doing any processing. All this is doing is it's taking the data and storing it. The rest is all interface. The rest just makes it easy to work with. And that is exactly how this works. And that is what the actual relationship is between the parse dashboard and MongoDB and of course the parse server and MongoDB. One more thing I'd like to note here though is that of course these two are basically server software, server side software, so they have to run on ports like for example, I don't exactly know what the default port is, uh, but like for example this could run at 4000 and this could run at, oh I don't know, maybe 3000, really whatever it is some sort of port that these are going to run on and the rest will be able to communicate through that web, uh, through that web interface and through that web API.
<laughs> All right, so that's exactly how Parse, both the Parse server and the Parse dashboard, are able to use MongoDB to store information and make your life working with databases much, much easier. In fact, if you haven't already heard about the Parse shutdown for some reason, uh, Parse has completely shut down now, uh, at least the services that they provide, like uh, hosted, hosted Parse servers. Uh, but what they've done is they've made Parse server and Parse dashboard open source. So that's why I'm, I keep on emphasizing that you can actually connect these to your own MongoDB instances and you can actually use your own uh, sort of like servers to host these although there are other hosting services available for Parse and there will be some links to them in the description. Alright so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope this was able to solve my subscribers question. Alright, so thank you very much for watching today. If you liked the video, please do make sure to like the video down below. And if you think it could help anybody else you know, like your family or friends, please do consider sharing the video as well. Of course, though, if you have any more questions, feedback, or suggestions, please do feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Email them to me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet them to me at tajimani. And if you didn't get that, there will be my contact information in the description below. Of course, though, if you really like my content and you want to see more of it, please do make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. And if you would like to be notified whenever I release new videos or content, what you can do is actually go to the subscription uh, button and click on the bell beside it and you can enable notifications so you're emailed and notified on YouTube whenever I release new content. Alright, so thank you very much for watching today. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Goodbye.